This is a guide for my Explorer solderless kit, which will convert your stock Explorer into a fully modded guitar controller with RGB LED frets that can be used on PC, Mac, PlayStation 3, 4, and 5, as well as any modded RGH Xbox 360s. These kinds of guitars are often referred to as Arduino guitars and are currently the best you can get in terms of latency and reliability. Also, you're replacing a bunch of old components in your guitar, which can greatly extend the life of your controller. There are two tools that you'll need to complete this mod that are not included in the kit, which are a screwdriver with some PH bits and a 1 16th flathead bit, as well as some wire strippers and cutter. You can find links to these in the description of this video. To get started, remove the 10 screws on the back of the body of the guitar. Note that the screw that connects the body and neck together is slightly longer than the rest. You'll need to keep that in mind when putting everything back together. I'm using a PH2 bit to remove the screws, but a PH1 should also work. Even though I'm using a power screwdriver, a normal one will also do the job just fine. Prying the body off, you can see the dried up glue covering the wire terminals. It also looks like some of the screws are stripped already. This guitar was never opened, so that's just how it came from the factory. This is a fairly common issue that I've seen between different guitar models. Moving on, let's unscrew the other five screws from the rear of the neck. I also removed four additional screws that hold the neck to the body, although removing these is not required if you do not want to separate the neck from the body for cleaning. We can see the fretboard is also covered in dried glue, which is fine since the kit comes with replacement screws and washers. Let's remove these old screws. You may need to wiggle the board free, especially if the guitar has never been opened. Just make sure not to break off the plastic standoffs as we'll need those. And also remove the silicone and stock frets. Moving back to the body, we're going to remove the four corner screws of the strum board using our PH1 or PH0 bit, and we won't need to remove any of the other screws on this board. Next, I'm going to remove the RJ11 port since I want to use that hole to feed the new cable through as I think it's a better option than the stock cable placement. These screws are a bit difficult to get out because they're caked in glue. Apply some downward pressure to the screw and move slowly at first to ensure you don't strip it. I also had to use a flat edge to pry up the board due to the excessive glue. Next, we'll remove this plastic bracket to release the USB and whammy cables. Save this bracket because we'll need it later. Next, we'll undo the four screws on the main board so we can replace it with our breakout board for the start, select, home button inputs. Notice how the top two screws on my board are already a bit stripped, which means we'll need to be careful and work slowly to remove them. To do this, you want to push down on the screwdriver while turning and unscrew slowly. If you move too fast, you can strip the screw even further and have to resort to other, much less fun methods to remove the screw. All of these screws are going to be replaced, so it's okay to cut or damage them to get them out if it gets to that point. Just make sure you don't break the plastic standoffs that they're screwed into. Next, you'll want to cut the wires at the positions that I show here. I use flush cutters, but you can use the cutters on your wire strippers or even scissors to the same effect. After that, lift up on the main board and all the other components should freely come with it. If there's any resistance, that means that something is still connected and you should double check it. I used an electric air duster to blow out the glue debris out of the shell, but a towel or even your fingers can get it cleaned out as well. Next, you'll want to check the black carbon pads on the silicone for your mainboard buttons. If you see any debris, brush it away with a dry Q-tip. I would avoid using anything like isopropyl alcohol as that might loosen the adhesive that holds these pads to the silicone. Next, we're going to use our flathead bit to turn the screw terminals on the breakout board counterclockwise to open them. Then we're going to take our JST wire and insert them into the screw terminals. I'd recommend only doing four at a time. Trying to do them all at once will be a bit of a hassle. Once you've got them in, turn the screw clockwise until you start to feel resistance. You don't need the terminal to clamp down super tight onto the wire. 
Check the cables with a light tug just to make sure they're securely in place. Next, take a look at your strum board. You'll see the inputs of the breakout board match the inputs at the top of the strum board. The up and down inputs are swapped on my initial batch of the breakout boards, but it'll be fixed in my next batch. You can connect down to up or up to down interchangeably. It'll work just fine. Just like the breakout board, rotate the screws counterclockwise to loosen them, then clockwise to clamp them down onto the wires. Then we're going to take the remaining three wires from the breakout board and connect them to the select start ground terminal in the top right corner of the strum board. Next, you'll want to hook up the three twisted cables to the three wire terminals on the strum board. Make sure the cables are fully inserted into the terminals as I've shown on the screen here. Next, we're going to take these small T-shaped key switch caps and insert them into the navy strum switches on the bottom of the strum board. This will ensure that the strum bar doesn't feel loose. After that, place the strum board and breakout boards into position. Break off four plastic washers and gather four screws. Begin to twist the screw through the washer about a quarter of the way in so the screw will stand up on the board to make installing it a lot easier. Then install all four washers and screws and the breakout board will be finished. Next, gather four screws and break off three circular washers and then gather one rectangular washer. You'll notice that one of our wires is right over one of the screw standoffs. Position the strum board and bend the wire so that it's clear of the standoff to avoid damaging it. In later variations of the zero board, this positioning will be changed so it's not an issue. Then tuck the wires into the shell. Just like the breakout board, screw in three screws and circular washers into the three corners of the strum board. The corner with the USB-C port will require you to slot the rectangular washer into place first and then install the screw. And that's the strum board finished. If you unscrewed the four screws holding down the neck to the body, you can take this time to clean it. Mine's nice and clean, so I'm moving on to the fretboard. You'll notice that the fretboard has the same labels near the wire terminals that the strum board does, so you'll want to connect the matching terminals together with the twisted wires. Then you'll want to pop in the new translucent frets. When installing these, take a look at the label on the rear body shell of the guitar. If your model number ends in 5.5, you can just use the frets and install the fretboard. If it ends in 6.5, like mine, you'll need to insert the included fret shims to ensure that the new frets make flush contact with the new fretboard. Once those are in, install the fretboard with the two screws and the two circular washers. Next, we're going to tape down the wires so they stay inside the shell. I loop them around the neck and then use two pieces of clear tape to make sure they stay put. We don't want them moving around and getting crushed by the shell when we screw it on. Now fasten those four screws back on if you remove them and install the rear neck shell, making sure it fits nice and flush with no bulges. 
there's any bulges, make sure the wires are clear of the plastic standoffs, then reinstall the five screws to finish off the neck modifications. Now moving on to the whammy bar. You'll need to separate the wires and use your wire strippers to expose the bare copper wire. I use the 22 gauge slot and expose about five millimeters or just under a fourth of an inch of bare wire. I didn't really catch a good angle of me stripping the actual whammy wire, so I'm just recreating it here on some GST wire, but it's the same process. Now just loosen the screws on the whammy terminals, which is the three pin terminal touching the rectangular washer. You'll want to take note of which wire is connected to the center pin of the whammy bar. Mine is the red wire. You'll want to insert that wire into the center terminal. The other two wires can be inserted in either of the remaining terminals, order doesn't matter. Then the whammy bar is done. Next connect the provided USB-C cable to the port on the strum board, and don't worry about routing the cable just yet. Because we're going to take care of the tilt sensors. Insert the two tilt sensors into the tilt slot on the strum board, and then bend them left and down slightly. We'll do some fine tuning of the tilt shortly, so don't worry much about the exact position right now. And then you can leave the rear body shell off for this next part. Now we're going to configure our inputs using Sanjay 900's Guitar Configurator, which can be downloaded with the link in the description. You'll want to download the file ending in .exe if you're using Windows, or the file ending in .dmg if you're using a Mac. Once it's installed and opened, connect your guitar to your computer, and then under Found Devices, select Raspberry Pi Pico, and then click Continue. Click Start Programming, and then Start Configuring. Next, we're going to select each input, click Change Pin Binding, automatically find pin binding, then tap the matching input, then click Apply Changes. We're going to rinse and repeat this for every single input on the guitar. Then we're going to click Configure Tilt and change the type to Digital. Then we're going to change the pin binding and tilt the guitar. Then click Apply Changes, click Close, then click Configure LEDs. Change the type to APA 102, and then drag the colors so the order is orange, blue, yellow, red, green. Then click close, and then click right. The guitar will disconnect and reconnect, and when it reconnects, your LEDs will be active. We can change these colors later, but first we're going to calibrate the whammy bar. So hover over the whammy, click calibrate whammy, and then for the minimum value, release the whammy bar and let it sit idle, and then click OK. And for maximum value, hold it all the way down, and while it's held down, click OK. Then we're going to set a dead zone. I like to hold down the whammy bar just slightly and then click OK. And then test the value. And it looks good. And then click right to save your changes. This time when the controller reconnects, I want you to open your start menu and then type in joy.cpl and then hit enter. This will bring up a window. In that window, select the controller that starts with Arduino, and then click Properties. Then open the Test tab. We're going to test each of our inputs on the guitar and make sure that a corresponding button lights up on the Test tab.
Now we're going to adjust the tilt sensitivity. Tilt is tied to the Z rotation value, which will go full when the tilt is activated. Hold the guitar like you normally would while playing, then tilt it until it activates. If you'd like the tilt angle to be lower, then angle the tilt sensor upwards towards the top of the strum board. If you want to increase the tilt angle, bend the sensors further downwards towards the bottom of the strum board. Keep experimenting until you find an angle that you like the best. Now I'll show you how to customize the LED fret colors. Hover over each fret input and you'll see a new set LED color option. Click on this and you'll be able to choose whatever color you want for each fret. Just make sure the brightness slider on the right side of the window is turned up, otherwise you won't be able to see the LEDs. Once all the colors are set, click right to finish your changes. Now we're going to button up this guitar and finish the mod. Reroute your USB cable through the guitar so that it will sit under the plastic bracket that we removed earlier. I'm going to tuck it under there along with the whammy wires. That's all the internal mods done, now we just need to install the rear body shell. Align the back shell with the front and push down, making sure that everything sits nice and evenly flush. If there's any bulges or parts of the guitar shell that won't go down, then something is not seated correctly inside or a wire is blocking a plastic standoff. Reinstall the 10 screws, making note of that one longer screw that connects the neck and body shells together. And that's it. We are done. I think this is a really great way to breathe new life into old controllers that might be dying or dead. Uh, you can use it for Yarg on PC, Clone Hero on PC, Guitar Hero World Tour Definitive Edition on PC, pretty much any game you can play on PC with a plastic instrument, you can play with this guitar. It also works on PlayStation 3, 4, 5, modded 360s, and Mac as well. But yeah, that's it. More guides to come. Hope you enjoyed.